Hello and welcome to Boston Design Week webinar series. I am Melinda Marquardt and I'm the owner and the designer of The Veil London. Um, today I'm going to be discussing the topic of bringing art to life and I'm going to walk you through the last two collections that I've designed and show you my original illustrations and paintings and how I turn them into beautiful wallpapers and fabrics for your home. I'm going to show you the full wallpaper first and the full uh, design and then I'm going to walk you through each individual piece and how it actually got turned into this repeat. So this is lion wall, you can see here. There's um, illustration of a lion and then there along the side there's illustration of different foliage and around the lion we have sort of a marbled effect um, and then I built the repeat after that. So the first part that I created was when I was in Tanzania, I was on a safari and I was designing and drawing just everything around me. So this is a sketch from my sketchbook that I did off of a photograph from a, a picture of a lion that um, I saw on the safari and he was so close to us I found him really engaging and so I drew a picture of him. And then when I got back to my studio, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with that lion. So I started messing around um, just in my sketchbook and try, like, okay, so what am I going to do with this lion head? Am I going to put it in a sort of a shield? And what would offset that lion and make it a little bit more of a feminine piece so there's a balance between masculine and feminine energy within this design? I also really liked the idea of um, adding some sort of a vine or some sort of a um, floral aspect to that and so this was sort of an initial sketch that I did. And then it came to building the actual pattern and so I, I knew that I wanted to frame the lion's head. Um, so I scanned the lion in and I started illustrating the soft rope design around the edges to frame his head. And I liked how that looked so I used that. And then once I had an idea of that I knew he was going to be in a, a frame. I started scanning that in to the computer and I started to build the repeat. And this ended up not being one that I used, but it's just a, a, an idea of how I start to figure out the layout of a design. You can actually see some Corinthian columns in there and which ended up not being used, but perhaps they'll be used in a future collection with some, some other motif. Um, I just looked really closely at the negative spaces. So in between all these lines, you can see I've mapped out the space that needs to be filled in with some sort of design. But actually, again, this ended up not being used and I ended up going in a different direction. Um, so then I knew that I really wanted to have all those florals, so I started illustrating those. Uh, so this is both the lion and all the florals are done in with ink with fine liner pens. So almost just like a biro that you would find in your desk. I really like that sketchy feel um, and idea. And and then here are the the leaves. I did I illustrated a little bit of eucalyptus to go alongside the carnations and the roses. And let me just point back to that wallpaper design, so you can see again where all those motifs went. So we have the line in the middle. We have the stripe of all of those floral designs that I did. And then um, I thought I wanted to add some color, but I wasn't really sure how to do that at the time. And I took a trip to Venice with my mom and dad. And I am actually walked into a beautiful marbling paper store and I met with the master marbler of that store who was actually there teaching. So I took a class with him and, and he showed me how to make marbled papers. And uh, marbled papers are created using a aqueous surface design method. So what that means is you have a tray of liquid called size in front of you and on top of that you actually sprinkle the paint or you place the paint or you drip the paint across the surface of this liquid 
and the paint is oil based and so it will sit on the surface of your water and so you can swirl around a design into those paints. And once you have the design that you think that you would like on the surface of the paper, you take a piece of paper and you place it on top of the liquid that you have and you pull it back and you get the design on, on the paper. And then you can do that over and over again in the same bath or a different bath depending on the colors that you want. Um, so I got home and I started messing around with marbling and it turns out that it's way harder than I thought. And um, I'll actually show you some of the first drafts because they're absolutely terrible and I just want to show you that like, my process isn't always perfect and it takes a lot of practice, especially with new materials. So this is the, the first one I got. It's got a giant air bubble in it. <laughs> it's a disaster. And you can see that the paints actually, I hadn't mixed them properly with the chemicals and so it was just a total mess. But through trials and tribulations, I mean, this one doesn't even have a design on it, it's just paint. <laughs> but by practicing over and over again, you start to see some patterns emerge. And I finally got the formula right and started getting more intense colors and really cool designs that I could use in the background of my lion. So I ended up using this one for the blue lion. And a lot of these I may use in the future for another collection. I don't know, I always keep all of my drawings and my illustrations. I really like this one, I think it's really cool. I don't know if I'm going to use that in the future, but I do keep a nice little record of all of my work. I, I ended up getting actually this kind of a beautiful stripe design using a homemade comb to go through the the surface of the water over the inks and I ended up using that one to create marble stripe and I think this is like a really classic design that has been modernized by the color palette and and it's also printed on a mica ground wallpaper so it's a little bit more lustrous than a, just a flat plain non-woven paper um, so back to the lion uh, I want to show you the fabric that I also created. I think it's important to have matching fabric and wallpaper so you can go full, full crazy with your lions in your, in your rooms. Uh, you don't have to use them both at the same time, but I do enjoy having the option of both. Uh, all of my linens are washable and they're also suitable for residential upholstery. I had a customer use this on a, a, a chair in a study and it looked so cool. Um, so I, you probably don't quite understand what I mean by turning the wallpapers in, sorry, the marbling into wallpapers. So the marbling that I showed you is hardly recognizable anymore. You can see here we have, I took this and I scanned it into the computer. And then I started creating a mirror repeat and you can see how it's completely transformed as I digitally adjusted the colors and the repeat, but it makes a very beautiful wallpaper for the home, very soft, but a little bit geometric. And that's the exact design that was used in the background of the lion. So you can coordinate your wallpaper with your fabric. Each color of the lion actually has a completely different background. So let me show you what I mean by that. This is one of the other marbled pieces. This is a different method of marbling called speckling. And you take um, a paintbrush and you dip it in your paints. And then I actually just hit it over the top of my hand like this. And then the paint sprays on the surface of the size and you get a more speckled effect like this. Um, this design I actually worked with a professional engraver and they made this repeat completely seamless so there's no banning in the walls once you install it. That on the background of the lion looks like this. So it gives it a little bit of a different flavor with the speckle and the green is a little bit more moody than the blue. And my best-selling pattern so far 
is actually the marble in cream. So this is marble tile wallpaper in cream and it swirls of silver and gold and bronze on that mica ground. It's very luxurious and subtle and a little bit more modern. And that is the background to the lion in cream. So a, a more neutral version of that lion that people, people love. Okay, and all of those have matching fabrics too, which I will get to. I kind of wanted to show them by color because I think it's important to show you what everything coordinates with as well. Um, on to another design that I worked on. Uh, it's called Darling because it depicts pictures of, hold on, I just want to make sure I <laughs> have the right imagery to show you. Ah, we're in a little bit of the wrong order. So I'm going to hold on to this one and get back to this in a second. I will actually going to show you pattern sugar bush. So sugar bush, um, again, was inspired by my trip to Tanzania and I saw the foliage there and I just started illustrating it with the watercolors that I had with me and the very little paper. Um, so I just started painting the local flowers, but in a more abstract way. This is a very rough sort of painting, very quick. And then I started getting a little bit more intricate and looking closer at the leaves and really um, pulling, out, pulling apart each individual area and showing off um, a more modern version of a traditional floral. Um, and then here's, here's the third one that I did on this trip too. And then I thought how, how I was gonna pull those all together and I thought that a, like a very swirling, viney drawing would be great. So I started doing, so, oh, I don't know if you can see that because it's pencil. It's a very light pencil drawing and of the repeat that I had in mind. It's just swirling vines and with those beautiful flowers at the end. And I think this one you might be able to see a little better where I was going. So this was the concept that I sent to the mill with my paintings and they came back to me with a pattern actually that we didn't end up using um, because as you can see here I put a stripe in the background and it actually didn't turn out very nice and the colors weren't great. So I said let's just do it monotone and let's take away that stripe and simplify the whole thing and we ended up with this gorgeous gorgeous embroidery and this is called sugar bush and it's an abstract of the florals in the jungle in Tanzania. If you look more closely you can see there's about seven different types of embroidery used in here and that's all hand guided so it is a very luxurious piece. The mill did an incredible job and it makes beautiful drapery for your home. I also had someone use it for um, the, co the cover of their duvet, and I think that's a gorgeous idea to do with this as well. Um, two, cool. let's see where we're at now. Oh yeah, let's show you Tasselberry. So Tasselberry, again, I think, I think this trip to Africa was a really important trip for me because it really did inspire the full first collection. Um, this is a drawing of the African grey parrot and I really like this type of traditional illustration but I do want to modernize it a little bit because uh, I like to think of the veil as traditional with a twist and so I illustrated three different versions of this bird and I wanted again to add some color but I wasn't quite sure how so I thought, I thought it would be interesting because the parrots were grey to have the background be colorful, to have the foliage be colorful. So I started doing watercolors of the local uh, berries that they eat, which are called tassel berries. And so then I take all of those uh, images and then I scan them into my computer and then I start messing around with the repeat. So you can see here, I decided to go with a more horizontal idea of the birds on the trees rather than vertical. And I thought that was a modern twist on a traditional bird twill. And then I worked with a very, very good digital printing mill and found that they had this beautiful grass cloth texture that I could have it printed on. 
So the end result is actually um, printed on a pearlescent ground with grass cloth on top of that. And the contrast between that more intense illustration with black and white and the softness of the wallpaper again adds to that balance of the masculine and feminine look. This pattern everybody loved but I thought that it needed to come in a neutral as well. So I actually added in a new color for this collection, the Beaufort collection in color, what's the name? Color Berry. And we have very soft tones of green and berry tones in sort of a purple and a plain cream background. And I think that turned out really beautifully. All right. <laughs> Panamania. This is a great one because I was in Paris and I was at a design show and I met this wonderful woman who works with the communities in Panama um, to, who create these beautiful masks. Um, and the masks I actually collect and I have them in my house and I decided to illustrate them and they, the masks are made of straw and they are woven and I thought that that would make a very beautiful wallpaper. So I illustrated them using shellac inks and watercolors and those shellac inks give them a little bit more depth. I hope you can see here how it catches the light a little bit. It has a little bit more depth than just a flat drawing. And I kept drawing all of them. Some of them are monkeys, some of them are birds. It's just a mixture of wildlife in the jungle. And the end result is this beautiful wallpaper. I think it's really fun. And also, if you look really closely at this, it's a very high quality paper. And you can actually see every brush stroke and every um, ink blot that I, was in the original drawings. And that's really important to me. Okay. Um, I'd like to show you some of the coordinating colors that go with what I just showed you. So the veil is a very, is a, usually a small boutique collection. And every collection really coordinates with one another and is, is a really tight collection. Um, so to go with that beautiful Panamania, we have Pattern Cup. And this is a ribbed cotton. I'm actually gonna come a little closer so you can see that texture in there because I think it's really cool. Um, so that's an actual, that's a screen printed fabric. And it's suitable for upholstery at 60,000 double rubs. And then I'm gonna get to the lily. So this is pattern lily stripe and this is the chocolate brown color palette that goes nicely with Cub and Earth. And I'm gonna show you the original lily drawings that I did. This is the first one I did. And I thought it was just a little bit too busy for what I wanted. I wanted it to be a little bit more simple. So I went on and I did another one and this ended up being the drawing that I used for Lily Stripe wallpaper. And you can see that here, how that translated over. All of these lilies come in a matching fabric as well. So here's the lily. Actually, I'm gonna show you the rest of the, the color palettes first. Okay, so we're still in the chocolate brown. We have the mar marble stripe in chocolate. And then we have veil stripe, and this was supposed to be the stripe that was in the background of Sugarbush, but I ended up pulling it apart and using it as a coordinate. And I think it's really a wonderful 100% uh, cotton fabric that can be used for upholstery or drapery. And um, you can see the variation in tone in each stripe. And that's done on purpose uh, through the use of jacquard because this was originally a watercolor and my mill did a really clever job at translating that into a jacquard and you can still see that paint stroke in each individual stripe. And then sugar bush in the neutral is one of my favorites. It's very subtle and it's cream on cream pretty much, but like a cream on a tan linen very natural, soft, and pretty. Um, and then there's that lily stripe in the chocolate fabric. 
Okay, moving on to, I just put this in the right place. Oh, I think this one's an amazing one to talk about because it's very different to my style from the first collection, but I still think you can see uh, the hand of the veil in it. Um, I was very inspired by a trip to Amsterdam that I took and I visited the Rijksmuseum and I saw a lot of the, the Dutch masters work and I mean, tulips are obviously very Dutch and so I was inspired and I did a watercolor of these traditional Dutch tulips. I wanted to pair that with a more modern concept of tattoo art and I started illustrating this using those shellac inks again and I thought how am I going to make how am I going to put these together in one design? I think that'll make a very interesting again masculine feminine offset and this ended up being the final product here so you can see the two lips here facing one another the snake in the middle and I ended up doing watercolors of peonies and then another shellac drawing of panthers to complete the design so that works out as being kind of a large stripe and this can be used as panels or it can be used um, as as wallpaper so I'll show you what I mean by that I designed hold on <laughs> hmm, we might have to wait oh here we go I offer just the plain background as well so you can mix and match these two together and have just one panel in a bedroom and then have the rest as just this beautiful heathered surface or you can do every other panel with the snakes or you can have a frame around the door. There's so many different options with this collection. Um, that also comes in pink and green and also in color Poseidon, which is a really beautiful darker tone. There we go. Um, I like to show veil stripe with this because the colors are created especially to coordinate. So veil stripe Poseidon is almost like a deep dark emerald and black color and at different lights, in different lights it catches different areas. And then to go with the oxblood colorway of Pardis Toile, I have the veil stripe in color oxblood. It would make a very intense dining room. When I was in Florence, I did an art history tour through a lot of the churches there. And I took my sketchbook, it says Florence on it, and um, a pencil with me everywhere we went. And I started illustrating little motifs in artwork and in the churches that really inspired me. And in and on a lot of the churches, I saw this very beautiful motifs like this and this one within the friezes of the churches. I also saw this multiple times, this sort of fun geometric design and a lot of florals like this. So when I got home, I found that the one that I was most drawn to is here, is that zigzag design with the little dot on the top. Um, so I took that and I decided to make it a little bit more modern. I also saw, I also wrote down where I found these things. So it says here, in, I found another design in a Corinthian capital in Dante's church. So here you go. Those are the two motifs that I'm about to show you translated into wallpaper. Here we go. And I'm going to show you the pink colorway of this because I think that, you know, the use of color can really change how you see a pattern. So this is the pink version of Florentine Zag. This wallpaper is very subtle and almost, that pink is almost like a neutral. And it's printed on a linen ground. So it's very soft, very luxurious. 
And I also created a larger scale for a drapery fabric. This is an embroidered fabric in the same haze pink color, a little bit brighter in tone because I liked the offset of the white. Um, it's a very thick embroidery, almost like a cruel. And then that second motif that I showed you, I call it serpent scale. Again, very subtle, beautiful wallpaper. Comes in three colors. Um, and I think it shows off a little bit better in the other color palette, so you'll see that. But it's on printed on a mica ground. Let me turn off these lights quickly. That's better, now you can actually see with the natural light. Yeah, so there is the serpent scale in color haze. Um, to coordinate with the pinks, I created this beautiful fabric called Diana Stripe. This is again on linen, it's so beautiful. It's all hand painted by me with watercolors in the studio. You can even see little brush strokes in here through the digital print. Very luxurious. Then this is Agnello Boucle, and it's a beautiful coordinate to all the pinks in the collection. It is a mixture of all natural materials and you can see that luxurious finish to it, how beautifully it falls. I, it's definitely an upholstery fabric, but I just want to show you that lustrous finish. Um, it has wool, cotton, and a little bit of viscose. I think that's it. Serpent scale I also did in a linen, and this is such a cool fabric because the technology behind it is what really makes it special. Can you see that it has a very light chintz on the surface? I did that on purpose. I wanted it to have a very luxurious finish. I also wanted it to sort of replicate the way that the friezes in the chapels in Florence were finished with, um, originally with egg whites. And if you've ever seen an egg white dry, it has sort of a, a, a shiny finish. Um, so that's the inspiration behind that. Um, the fabric itself, the design itself, is actually burned into the surface of this piece dyed linen. And so that's a new technology. They use lasers and it makes that the white stand out. Very cool. Um, and also in the same style that I created the lion, I also designed these flowers for this wallpaper. I don't think this is great lighting. It's very, very subtle floral design. Let me see if I can find it in the, in the darker color palette for you because it's much, much more intense. Here we go. Oh, that's not it. Let's see. All right, well, we might have to get to the darker one later. But I've done it in a neutral. Again, a very subtle floral. Let me see if I can get closer for you. Can you see those flowers in there? They're a very large scale floral design. And that coordinates with all the neutrals in the collection. And back to, back to the pinks. This is called Painted Strie. This was originally a painting that I did on canvas, um, an oil painting that I shipped to the mill to create into a cotton jacquard. Um, you can see every brush stroke in the final piece that's really important. It's a beautiful, natural, soft fabric for upholstery. Um, pattern, pattern Sinara is very cool. I'll show you the wallpaper and the original drawing. So this is artichokes, um, and from a trip that I took to Kew Gardens, I was photographing a lot of the beautiful, beautiful florals around me, and I found out this is actually what an artichoke looks like when it's growing. So when I got back to my studio, I started illustrating that using um, charcoal pen. Sorry, not pen. <laughs> charcoal. Um, and a lot of those strokes are made with an eraser. So then I scan that into my computer, and I create the repeat like this. Again, that's on that really pretty uh, grass cloth with the pearlescent ground, and then the repeat is a vine-like 
stripe, organic stripe, I'd like to say. Um, and I want to show you how that coordinates with everything else. So we have Florentine Zag again, but in that really cool charcoal color palette, it makes it more masculine, but it also makes it more intense, which I love. And I like how that mixes together with the Sinara. And of course, the Florentine Zag in a really light color. And Veil Stripe in a very intense charcoal gray. This makes great upholstery or drapery. You can see when it drapes, it actually holds its shape. So if you want that really grand traditional drapery, you can get that with the pooling at the bottom and it will actually stay in place and catch the window light really beautifully. We also have coordinating linen in every single color that I've shown you and more. This is my best selling linen. It's called Timeless Linen and it's suitable for upholstery, drapery, absolutely anything. It's also washable, which is great for slip covers. You know, if you have dogs, kids, whatever. Um, or if you're just messy, <laughs> like me, um, this is a great pattern to have um, as a slip cover. And it's super soft too. It's a 100% Belgian linen. That painted strie looks very, very cool in the black and white. And the Florentine Zag in the neutral is very soft and pretty. It almost, it's like a wool um, linen, very thick. Okay. Um, let me show you a few of the Tranquil color palette just to show you how different each of these designs looks in a different color. Um, here we go. So this one, you might be able to see the design way better. Here we go. Um, so that's the darling again, and that's all drawn by a pen originally and scanned in, and the repeat is created digitally, very large floral. The Tranquils is very soft tone, very soothing, very calming. And there's that serpent scale in the Tranquil. And then I love Veil Stripe in this color too. If you're redoing a home, this is a great color for a bedroom. Um, studies have shown that psychologically people feel calmer around blue color tones. And Agnello Boucle in the soft blue. The Serpent Scale in the blue. It's very subtle in this color. It's almost like a plain color, but then when you get close, you realize just how luxurious it is, and there's a little bit more intrigue to it than just a plain linen. And the Florentine Zag in the blue. I like this color palette. I've done it on a neutral ground instead of the white because I thought it was a little bit softer and more usable. Um, I think that's really everything that I have to show you today. Um, I think that what's important about the veil for me is that I'm creating artwork for your home. And every single piece that I design, I'm very, very selective with, with what makes it into the collection. I want everything to be perfect and I want everything to be coordinating or loosely coordinating. Also, everything is all natural. and all the natural materials that I use just end up creating just a much more luxurious collection. Also, it's much better for the environment using natural fibers and natural dyes. That is the best way for me to make sure that our carbon footprint remains very low. These are also going to be recyclable and once you're done with them, but these fabrics are meant to last a long time and stay in your homes for years to come. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining me today and I really hope that you enjoyed the presentation and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to the Martin Group, that's where the Veil is located in Boston, or you can contact us directly through the website 
and that's thevalelondon.co.uk. Thanks again and hope to see you soon.